know, our school is going through some trying times of late. The bills are piling up and in the natural, we don't have the necessary funds to maintain our residence here in this here edifice. Certainly prayer is our strongest weapon, but as good stewards of what God has given us, we need to tighten our belts and curb some unnecessary spending. So does that mean the life-size human catapult made entirely of popsicle sticks is off the table? Miss Peterson, as you may recall, that was off the table the moment you mentioned it. Nothing has changed, okay? Yes, um, what about toilet paper? Should we start rationing? I would consider toilet paper a necessity, Miss Silvers. There's no need to ration. Any more questions? Okay, in addition to watching our spending, I believe the Lord is leading us to apply for a special grant set aside for religious nonprofits that are serving the community in some unique way. So in addition to expecting the financial disclosures, there's an essay that we need to write about ourselves that will require some looking back and reflecting on why we are here and showing just cause for this benevolence. I'll begin that activity this week. Principal Merriweather, as you know, I have a wealth of knowledge in the area of biblical archaeology. Should you need my assistance with the grant? I will certainly keep that in mind. Thank you, Mr. Turkelson. And last but certainly not least, I contacted that director of what I like to think of as our sister school. They go by the name RJCS. I spoke to that wonderful director, I just love her, and I inquired about their success. At the crux of that excellent work that they do is their laser focus on relationship with God. I think we may have strayed away from that. So let's do some self-examination, and where needed, return to our roots. That's all for today. Let's get out there and have a wonderful week. It's going to take a miracle. Lord, what do I write? Okay, First Church Christian Academy was a dream of my mother's. She imagined a school where like-minded teachers that had a passion for reaching the troubled youth could give them an opportunity for an excellent education and introduce them to the only one that could make a difference in their lives, Jesus. It was a grand vision that she had that became a reality many years later. Hello? Does anyone have any extra bubble bands? Miss Peterson, this is not a chat service. Please, get off the intercom. Okay, thank you. Our school is anchored on five core values. The first one is integrity. The Greek word is anomia, without law. You become a law unto yourself. Anomia? Ain't that Courtney's baby cousin name? I had him in my PE class last year and he was without law. He was a outlaw. He didn't listen to a word I ever said. (laughs) Well, I don't think that would be the proper use of the word. And I don't think it would be appropriate to name a child anomia? Preposterous! Hold up. What's wrong with the coffee machine? It's out of order. (laughs) Hello, staff. Our coffee machine is under attack. But the devil is a lie. And the repairman has been called and should be here tomorrow. So please do not use the machine until it has been fixed. Sincerely, Principal Merriweather. Hmm. Hold up. I have one just like this at home. It's not this big, but it's the same model. (laughs) What do we need a repairman for? Your fixer girl is here. Wisdom would suggest you do exactly what is written on the note. Wisdom would suggest. I suggest you watch me fix this coffee machine. Hmm. (laughs) I need coffee. Uh, it's out of order. Okay, well, I really need some caffeine, so, hmm, hmm. Uh, you get one of them Cokes out the fridge. Well, okay, I, I'm i not 
usually a coke drinker. I'm more of a kombucha person myself, but this morning I'm desperate. Even though regular soda makes me break out and then my tongue swells, it's really bad, but I gotta get back to my class now. We're painting with watercolors today. machine have been damaged. It's gonna void your warranty. Excuse me? What do you mean damaged? If any damage has occurred, it's a defect in the machine. We didn't do anything to it. Why would we? Lady, someone broke the machine. I mean, this piece is no longer attached. Heck, it appears someone tried to glue it back on. It ain't covered no more. This is a Christian school, and we honor God. If my staff says that they had nothing to do with breaking it, I believe them. They operate in the utmost integrity. I would stand behind them on this matter with confidence that if they in any way damaged this machine through some sort of negligence or pride, they would absolutely come forward and confess it. So clearly, we were sold a defective machine to begin with. Look, there's no way you ever use this thing if you got it broke like this. And in order to fix it, you gotta replace this whole front part. Without the warranty, you might as well buy a new one. Well, Mr. Repairman, we really thank you for your services. I didn't know you were so interested in Matthew Henry commentary. Is there any revelation you would like to share? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I did it, okay? It's me. I broke the coffee machine. At first, I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. But then I had taken the wheel back because I had a machine like that in my house. I thought I could fix it. I was like, the fix it, girl. Now try to fix it. Then the thing broke up in my hand. Then I almost had to lie to Miss Peterson. I know. It was like a hot mess. And then, wait, what? I know. Well, how did you know? Miss Peterson told me. Oh, no, she... Do you really want to go there? You're right. I was so convicted. And I knew I was wrong that whole time. I should have never listened to Mr. Torkelson. He always trying to get me in trouble. He be instigating. <laughs> but for real though, I'm sorry, Principal Merriweather. I know better than that. It's forgiven, but I'm docking your pay $5 per month until it's paid off. And you need to replace all the Cokes everybody's been drinking. You know we can't run a proper school without sufficient caffeine for these teachers. $5? Can we make it two and a half? Two and a quarter. Two seventy-five final offer. Come on, Principal. Come in, Mr. Torkelson. Hello. You wanted to see me? Yes. I was looking at the grades coming in from your class, and they seem to be getting worse, not better. We've had a few parents complaining as well. Complaining? Well, to be frank, I have some of the most remedial kids in my classes, so it stands to reason that they would have difficulty comprehending the class material. They're flipping <laughs> Bible class, Mr. Torkelson. How is that possible? Even Bobby John Bill. He is one of our brightest students. He even wanted to go to Bible college. Now, his mom says he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. What is going on? Hmm. I'm not surprised. He shows a different side in my class. One of disinterest, or dare I say disdain, for the Bible. What are we going to do to reach the students, Mr. Torkelson? I put my heart and soul into teaching every day. My pedagogy requires time-honored techniques and best practices. I am not questioning your effort. We just need to find a way to turn this around. Principal Merriweather wants us to find out what's going on in Mr. Thorkinson's class without disturbing the natural habitat. You mean she want us to spy, and you gonna regret it cause uh, you seen the kids come out of his classroom? They look traumatized. You know like how you feel after you spend six hours in the hair salon waiting for your appointment only to find out that your appointment is on the next day. How can we get up there? Oh. Oh. 
morning, class. Our daily Bible recitation is the Lord's Prayer found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. We will recite it together in Old English. Everyone, Father Ura, do te out in heaven. See binamge how good to become a ben riche. You're worthy than will uh, on earth and swa swa in heaven. Earn a good day, wamli chan laf, sila as today. And forgive us our guilt us. Swa swa we forgive or un good tendon. And negilad buasan kostnunga. Akalis us of ifele solice. This is Matthew 6, 9 to 13, of course, taken from a vernacular translation found in Bath that was written sometime in the early 11th century. Cheyenne! 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 What? What? Are you okay up there? Father, Father, make it stop. Make it stop. Saxon, with the aid of you a few lexicons from cross-reference park and verifications. I was just always wanted to do that. Mr. Topol said, please report to the principal's office. Mr. Topol said, please report to the principal's office. With all due respect, Principal Merriweather, what is the meaning of these incessant disruptions to my precious instructional time? Mr. Torkelson, don't make this about you. Now, I'm going to come clean with you. I had a little reconnaissance done on your class, and what I discovered from the report was absolutely appalling. What have you done to the Lord's Prayer? How can one have a proper understanding of the prayer taught to the disciples by our Lord if they don't understand the path it took to get from the ancient languages to our ears today? Do you really think old English is about to make a comeback? <laughs> Remember, we are here to encourage students to develop a personal relationship with Jesus, not religion or tradition. They need to know Jesus, Mr. Torkelson. And let's make that as easy to understand as possible, okay? Okay, kids. Today we're learning about volcanic explosions. Our experiment should be a blast. Da -da -da. We'll use the models we made in art class yesterday to illustrate how magma can be ejected from the volcanic cone as oozing lava or violent bursts of gas and tephra. That just means little bits of rock. But, my young scientists, I want to emphasize that you should not try this at home. It can be very dangerous, but because of my expertise and knowledge, I am able to handle certain materials and chemicals. What you're about to see will simulate the mind-blowing power of the 1912 eruption of the Katmai Volcano in Alaska. Whoa! <coughs> it wasn't quite what I was expecting to have happen. <coughs> Children, let's all exit the room single file. <coughs> It will be okay, Susie. It will grow back. And mullets are in this year, I hear. Mostly for boys, but that's okay. <coughs> that's actually a nice shade of green. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I don't know if those stains will come out, but hurry up, everyone. Single file. Miss Peterson, what happened? Hold on. <coughs> I, I can't see you. I'm trying to focus my eyes. Can you talk into my left ear? Still have ringing in the right one. Somebody could have been seriously injured. I don't know how that could have happened. I I must have gotten my proportions wrong. Miss Peterson, you have got your priorities wrong. 
You could have jeopardized those kids. First, it was a situation with the frogs. Then there was the incident with the Miller boys. It took three separate calls to the plumber to deal with that slime clog in the lab sink. And I... But risk-taking and exploration are all a part of the scientific process, and no one has been hurt. Until now, it hasn't been this serious. But you cannot prioritize science over the school and definitely not over the safety of these children. Is this a safe and nurturing learning environment for these children? I want my mommy. <laughs> so for the Parent Teacher Social, we'll have some light snacks, maybe some sandwiches. We can let Thelma come up with the menu. What's wrong? Is there a problem? <laughs> Perhaps we should consider outside catering. I was thinking this would be a good opportunity for the parents to experience a taste of the nutritious square meals we provide for the children. Okay, what's going on? Talk to me. Well, some of my kindergartners have complained about burnt sandwiches and partially frozen chicken nuggets. I tried to share with Thelma some of my mother's tasty recipes for casseroles and organic entrees, but she shined me on. On the bright side, we've been able to use some of her mac and cheese for our Mother's Day macaroni necklaces, and they're just like fake gold. It'll give you a rash and turn your neck green, but... Yeah, so, like, all the kids who had pee after lunch have zero energy. They can't even run one lap. I asked them what was going on, and they said it's because they hungry since they refused to eat Miss Thelma's nasty food. Well, I prefer to bring my own lunch. Besides, I had to have my stomach pumped after eating Thelma's tuna salad. Why didn't anybody tell me? Thelma, we need to talk. I'm busy. I gotta finish these dishes, mop the floor, and get these things ready for tomorrow. Mm-mm. This is more important. Sit down. Okay. I'm sitting. Now, we go way back. We're sisters, Priscilla. Get to the point. Okay, the food is nasty. Nobody wants to eat it. We got a potential lawsuit for food poisoning that I didn't even know about. And you've never cooked this bad in your life. What is going on? Look, I'm volunteering to help out at this school. I slave in the kitchen for hours on my own time. I don't get a dime for this, and I don't get no appreciation. Ain't nobody got time for this. I could be home enjoying my retirement. Well, why did you come here in the first place? What? What happened to God told me to do this? I believe he called me to this. I just serve him. I believe this is what God called me to do. I just want to serve him. I used to give these kids my best. I put my foot in it. And what thanks did I get? Snatching food off the table, ain't even clean their hands. I'm trying to make sure we got some basic hygiene around here. And does anybody say, hey, your food is all right? They just ungrateful. Why am I working so hard? So I'm making my own statement. Mm-hmm. You can't appreciate it? Well, this is the kind of food ungrateful people eat. Nah. Okay, let me get this straight. Because you forgot who called you here. You gonna make the kids pay for that? You just twisting everything. You always do that. Listen, I get it. Sometimes the appreciation is just not fair. So if you feel this is not what you're supposed to be doing anymore, and you can't do it in excellence, walk away. And that'll just be between you and God. But if you stay, stop making nasty food. <laughs> Now, Clyde. I told you to call me C.D. For C. Um, Dawn. Yeah, yes, Clyde, we really need to talk about improving your reading and writing skills. I've, I feel it may be time to have a meeting with your mother. I don't think you want to do that. Um, yeah, well, is that a threat? <laughs> <laughs> 
because, you know, for your information, I've already left her a message. Now, I'm really scared for you. Ain't nobody supposed to know. But I come from the Thorn family. And the last teacher to try to talk about my grades was never heard from again. And you seem kind of nice. I don't want that to happen to you. Clyde, um, we'll talk more later. Pardon me, Mr. Torkelson. Do you know whether we have records for the kids' previous schools? Sure. It should all be in their cumulative folder. The full history, which mostly consists of things like, you know, uh, you know, this. <laughs> Francis Smith was last seen leaving a teacher's conference with Deasia Donovan, a.k.a. D-Don? Um, um, pardon me, Miss Roberts. Um, do you know much about the Dons from back in the day? The Dons? Mm, they used to terrorize the neighborhoods in this area for years. Folks say they still around, but you know, they doing stuff on the low low. You know what I'm saying? What made you ask that? Oh, well, <laughs> I was, you know, I was just, it's nothing. I, I was just reading something. That's all. I was doing something. Research. Oh, hey, girl. I almost forgot. When I was up at the front office, they gave me this message for you. It's something about Clyde's mom saying she'd love to talk to you about her son. She's coming here? Uh, no. If you will read the note, she says she is out of town, but would like to schedule a Zoom call. Um, hello, Mrs. Donovan. I, I, it's great to finally meet you. Yeah, I need to know what type of problems you're having with my son. Oh, uh, no, um, I'm, I'm not having any problems at all. You sent a note about his reading level implying that he may not be where he needs to be. If that's the case, that's going to be a problem. And it's not going to turn out well, if you know what I mean. I definitely don't want to have to tell his dad because he's not the type of man that you would want to play. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Um, I, yes, no need to elaborate. I mean, I, I agree. I, I don't see why we would need to bring him into this. <laughs> we need to see what we can do to resolve this situation. I don't want to have this conversation again. And I'm pretty sure you know about what happened at his previous school. It was very unfortunate what happened to the teacher. Oh, I, I'm, I'm certain we will not have the same problems. No, Mary. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Goodbye, Miss Silvers. I am so glad I ran into you, Miss Silvers. I was noticing Clyde's name up on the honor roll. And I'm wondering how someone who doesn't even know the letter C or D could end up with an A in your class. Um, yes. Well, Principal Merriweather, um, how can I say this? For me, CD stands for could die. And I really just don't think his grade is worth my life. Okay, um, what are you talking about? Clyde's mother threatened my life. They're part of the Dons that used to terrorize the neighborhood. The last teacher Clyde had was never seen nor heard from again. Okay, let me see if I get this straight. You think Mrs. Donovan is part of the cartel. And that's because Clyde told you she was. And to avoid losing your life, you gave him an A. Yes. Miss Silvers, what does this say? 
it says, We exhibit Christ's love for the children and families we are working with. And part of loving is believing the best. Did you even ask any clarifying questions to find out if she wanted to kill you? <laughs> Principal Merriweather, that is absolutely preposterous. Mrs. Donovan, I'm I'm so glad you could come to this meeting, and um, I scheduled this meeting uh, to let you know that, despite the concerns I have for my own life, I believe that it's very important to have an honest conversation about how Clyde is not doing very well in my class. I have been slightly, I've lied, and said that he is doing well, that he is getting A's, when in fact he is actually failing. So I know that even though you are going to kill me, I'm willing to accept the consequences. What are you talking about? Are you talking about Mr. Francis? the best teacher that Clyde had actually ever had. He took a job teaching English overseas. Wait, you mean to tell me you really thought yes, someone I, wanted to kill you? I certainly feel extremely embarrassed about coming to the conclusion that you are a cold-blooded killer. Wait a minute. Come again? The Dons? Did Clyde tell you that? And I would like to extend my deepest Clyde Deshaun Donovan <laughs> get in here right now boy what have I told you about lying to these teachers you got this woman in here scared out of her mind like we some gangsters over here something no better but mm, it's all right though it is all right wait till your daddy get home and I talk to him because it's gonna be on <laughs> Our mission has always been to build God's kingdom by nourishing the spirit, soul, and body of community youth, the least of these. And we do that through education, revelation, and the love of Christ. And despite all of our shortcomings and mishaps, I believe it still holds true. We're all here to make a difference. It's something God put in our hearts, and that's what makes it special. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Miss Silvers, what is a code turquoise? Um, you might want to come to Miss Peterson's class at your earliest convenience. God has been so faithful. The grant will cover all our bills and keep the school in the black for the next two years. Thank you. It has been a pleasure working alongside of all of you. Please enjoy the wonderful spread provided by our own Thelma.